We've all been there, seeing some beautiful new rocket launching for the first time and thinking, I want to build a scale model of that rocket. But choosing the right scale is critically important for the success of your project. You choose too big, it'll get too unwieldy. Too small, it's not going to be impressive enough. I'm Rocket Randall, and in today's video, I'm going to cover the three things that you need to think about to have the perfect launch with your next model rocket. But before we get into that, let's talk about what we mean by scale. In rocketry, scale means how much smaller it is compared to the real rocket. Think about some of the amazing rockets out there. Falcon 9 from SpaceX, the NASA SLS, the Starship that's coming, and of course, the mighty Saturn V. Each of these can be shrunk down, and the amount it's shrunk down is the scale factor. For example, this is a 1 100th scale of the Falcon 9. That means it's 1 100th the size of the original Falcon 9. Let's talk about SLS as an example. In this case, we have three different models with three different scales. This first one is a 1 200th scale. That means it is 1 200th the size of the real rocket. Next to it is a 1 144 scale which means even though the number is smaller, it's a bigger model. And this one is a 1 100. It's so tall here that it's even off the top of your screen. So you might be thinking more bigger is more better. And a lot of people think that way. That's kind of how I think most of the time, but that's not always the case. As you get bigger, there's some complexities that go into it. So let's talk about why you would choose these different ones. A scale model rocket is a model of a real rocket, and those vary greatly in size. You can't always tell from photos and videos, but they have massive differences between them. The largest in the world right now is the SpaceX Starship. This is a mock-up of a 1 100 scale Starship, and it is over four feet tall. Now the perspective makes it look a lot taller. I had to do that to even get it in the frame. The Starship is nine meters in diameter and over 123 meters tall. That is taller than a 40-story building. And on the other end of the spectrum is the Rocket Lab Electron, which is only 1.2 meters in diameter and 18 meters tall. You can kind of see here the difference in size between the Starship and the Electron. All of the rockets you see here on the table are 1 to 100 scale. And rockets are split up into three categories. You have the small lift, the medium lift, and the heavy lift. So 1 100 scale is very, very popular, as you can see here, but it doesn't always work out well. For example, the heavy lifts end up being really big, and that's not always practical. And the small lift are sometimes a problem. So, for example, we might want to go with a 150 scale for the Rocket Lab Electron instead of the 1 100 scale. That makes it a little bit more practical. Or we might want to go with a 1 144 scale for the Starship, again, just a little bit more practical. So based on the size of the rocket, you may need to scale it up or scale it down a little bit. The next thing you're going to need to think about for your model rocket is the size of the engine you're going to target. And each of these engines has a different lift capacity, and that is graded in a letter scale, anywhere from an A to a G on low power rocketry. I'm not going to talk too much about mid power and high power. I'm betting if you are certified for those, you already know all of this stuff anyway. So I'm going to be focused on the low power rocketry, easily accessible motors. And they go anywhere from a quarter A up to a G in low power rocketry. And I have before me some of the more easily accessible rocket motors. So the first one over here is a 12 millimeter half A motor. And that has a very small amount of lift power. But for something like the Rocket Lab Electron 1 100 I have over here, it's perfect. 12 mill millimeter just fits inside of it. So size was the determining factor there. And every time you go up a letter, it doubles the amount of available power. So a half A to an A, to a B, to a C, to a D, to an E, to an F, each time gets twice the amount of power out of it. And it's able to lift a much heavier, bigger rocket. So you're thinking, okay, well, it goes up linearly. No problem. As I get a bigger rocket, it goes up linearly. And that's not correct. If you go from a 1 to 200 scale rocket up to a 1 100 scale rocket, the 1 100 is twice as big. But because of the way that volume works, it's actually going to be four times heavier. And you're going to have to go up four sizes in rocket engines in order to lift it. So more bigger is not always more better. The other thing about rocket engines is they differ in price quite a bit. So on the smaller end, they might cost a buck or two, maybe three to launch. But on the higher end, you're getting into 14, 15. And when you get into the composite motors, which are even bigger, but still in the low power range, you might be talking 20, 25, even $40 a launch. 
So when you're thinking about targeting a model rocket motor, you need to be thinking not only how much can it lift, but how much it costs. If it costs too much, you're not gonna to wanna to launch it very often. Are you gonna to wanna to launch this regularly out at the pad? Then you wanna target something a little bit smaller so it doesn't break the bank. So the last thing you need to consider when designing your scale model rocket is practicality and panache. So when you're designing them, if you go really big, it's gonna be really big. For example, one of my kids wanted one of the big rockets. So we built it and suddenly it was like, where are you gonna put this in your room? I don't know. So you have to think about where are you gonna store it? How are you gonna transport it? How big is this thing really gonna be? Now, some of you probably have a great space in your garage where you can build it, where you can store it, transport it and launch it. Absolutely, go big. But you may wanna scale it back a little as well and do something that's a little bit more practical. So the second part of this is panache. And that means how big of a splash does it make when you show it off to other people and launch it up into the sky? You go too small and it doesn't make a big enough splash. Let me give you an example. When I was designing the first Starship that I did, I picked one to 200 scale. It was gonna be right about two and a half feet or so. I designed it all out and I printed it and here's what I got. And I thought, there's no way this is gonna work for the largest rocket in the world that this is gonna be my first version of the model. So I scrapped it and started over with a one to 144 scale. I knew the one 100 scale was gonna be way too big at four feet to be practical out of the gate. I may come back to that soon. Stay tuned for announcements. But out of the gate, I wanted something that was impressive, had a lot of panache, but was still practical enough to launch. And I ended up with the one scale and that launches on the F, which is still really large, but it's a great looking rocket and launches really well and is still practical, but has panache. So where does that leave us? What scale should you choose? There's no wrong answer except that you choose a scale that you can finish and launch. Too big and it might be too complicated, impractical and expensive to launch. And any rocket that launches is a great rocket. Hopefully you found some of this helpful in planning out your next rocket, thinking through the right scale of the real rocket, picking the right engine and finding something that's practical and yet has panache. As a reminder, the rockets you've seen throughout this video are available at maxqrockets.com. A few of them are still in prototype stage, so they're not available yet, but if you like and subscribe, you'll find out when they're available. And if you wanna learn more about model rocketry, 3D printing, and building scale model rockets, be sure to like and subscribe for that as well. There's a lot more content coming. In addition, I wanna hear from you. What's your experience with scale model rockets? What's your greatest success? What's your greatest failure? Let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to your replies. As always, keep your eyes in the sky with Max Q Rockets. <laughs>